In this video, we will look at two examples to practice classifying quadrilaterals in the coordinate plane. In example A, it says, determine what type of parallelogram T, U, N is, and it gives us the coordinates for T, U, N, and E, as well as a graph of those points. So the first thing you want to do is make a guess about what you think the shape is, just based on how it looks. I'm going to guess rectangle. It already told us it was a parallelogram, so that means it must be a specific type of parallelogram, and I think it sort of looks like there are right angles, so it looks like a rectangle. So now we actually have to show that it is a rectangle. One of the quickest ways to show that a quadrilateral is a rectangle is to show that its diagonals are the same length because if they're the same length, then it has to be a rectangle. So what we're going to do is check the lengths of EU and TN and show that they're the same length. And if they're not, that means that we must have been wrong in our guess. So to find the length of EU, we need to look at our graph and find the change in the x-coordinates as we go from E to U, as well as the change in the y-coordinates. So the change in the x-coordinates is 10, because there are 10 squares going from E over to U. And the change in the y-coordinates is 5. So that means that the length of EU is the square root of 10 squared plus 5 squared. So that would be the square root of 100 plus 25 or the square root of 125. For Tn, we're going to do the same thing to figure out the length. So we want to figure out the change in the y-coordinates and the change in the x-coordinates. So the change in the x-coordinates is 2, and the change in the y-coordinates is 11. So that means the length of Tn is 2 squared plus 11 squared, and then you square root all of that. So that's the square root of 4 plus 121, which is the square root of 125. So look, the two diagonals are the same length. They're both the square root of 125. So that means that we're right. It is a rectangle because the diagonals are congruent. And we've shown our work, so it's clear that the diagonals are actually congruent. All right, let's go to example B. In example B, it says a quadrilateral is defined by the four lines, and then we have four equations. Is this quadrilateral a parallelogram? So to be a parallelogram, it has to have two pairs of parallel sides. So that means that it has to have two pairs of lines that are parallel. And remember, to be parallel means that two lines have the same slopes. So let's just graph these in order to get a sense for what it looks like actually on the graph. So starting with y equals 2x plus 1, we start at our y-intercept is 1 and make some new points, which have a slope of 2. So this would be our first line. For our second line, y equals negative x plus 5. The y-intercept is 5, and the slope is negative 1. For our third line, y equals 2x minus 4. The y-intercept is negative 4, and the slope is 2 again. And finally, our last line is y equals negative x minus 5. So I'm going to have to go backwards a little bit there. And here is our quadrilateral. It's actually this shape right here. That's the sh shape, the quadrilateral that is made by the intersection of those four lines. So this is a parallelogram if the opposite sides are parallel. So that means the opposite sides have to have the same slopes. We actually already know that from the equations. 
there are two lines with a slope of 2. That's this line. Oops, that's this line and this line. And there are two lines with a slope of negative 1, which was this line and this line. So because the opposite sides have the same slopes, it has to be a parallelogram. So yes, it's a parallelogram because opposite sides have the same slopes. Now you could have done this problem without graphing it, but I like to graph it just to see what I'm working with so that I can be more confident in my answer in the end.